We thank you because you have given unto us all that pertains unto life and godliness. We thank you because from the beginning of creation, you gave man the right to rule and to reign. But sin came, defiled man, held him captive, and since then we have been under yoke under bounds of wickedness, under affliction, and under attack. But in due time, you send your son, Jesus Christ, for the liberation and the deliverance of humanity. And in him, we have life. And life in abundance. And I pray right now, O Lord, that every individual, every soul, every family, every situation, that is currently under the affliction and the torment of the enemy, will receive deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, Lord, that you use this mouth of clay to deliver your people. Amen. Speak, Lord, for your children are ready to be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The message before me is titled, Power over the forces of darkness. Power over the forces of darkness. When we talk about power, we're talking about authority. When we talk about power, we're talking about control. We're talking about having an influence over something or over somebody. When we talk about power, we're talking about supremacy. Supremacy over somebody. When we talk about power, we are talking about being able to rule, being able to command, being able to dominate the other party. And we know that from time immemorial, since after the fall of man, the devil has been in charge of the affairs of the world. No wonder the Bible says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Because Satan has gone there in fury. And when he came down, he came to steal. When he came down, he came to do what? To steal. He came then to kill and then finally to destroy. But I am here tonight to declare unto you that everything that has been stolen away from you shall be restored. I said everything, your glory, your dignity, your joy, your peace, your health, your finances, your womb that has been stolen away from you shall be restored in Jesus' name. Because Jesus came to set the captive free. And tonight is your night of liberation in Jesus' name. Power is a measure of an entity's ability or official capacity to control the environment around itself, including the behavior of other entities or personalities. What I'm saying there is sometimes it is we that gives the devil the right, the authority to rule and to control us because of our life, because of the things we have done and because of the kind of nature that we have. But whether they were authorized or they are acting illegally whatsoever the activity in your life, if you will cooperate with God and cooperate with the word of God, you will see the glory of God in Jesus' name. You see, talking about the power of God over the forces of darkness does not require so much of teaching. It requires practical manifestation of that power. I said practical manifestation of that power. Amen. 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 It's one thing for us to, to, to theoretically preach everything without any evidence. But when you begin to demonstrate the power of God, and you begin to prove that of a truth your God is alive, then the unbelieving world will believe. And tonight, something is going to happen in your life in Jesus' name. It was many years back in Atlanta, Georgia. 
I the sister came for prayer, and then there are two brethren here, they know the story I'm talking about. And then uh, I was so busy and tired. I've been in the church all day, and I said, Sister, I'm sorry, I won't be able to attend to you. But then she said, Pastor, please, uh, I will wait till any time. And she added, She said, I have even been fasting so as to be able to get this time with you. When she said that, I had no choice. I had to put my own tiredness behind. And then we prayed for her and to God's glory. To God's glory. Just as we were praying, without anybody touching her, she began, she began to somersault. She began to scream. She began to shout. She'd gone through all kinds of things in her life. And at the end of it all, when it was all over, and we'll get into the story of all that happened. When it was all over, I looked at her. Her face changed completely, like the face of a new baby. There is freshness over there. And then I, I thought I was the only one seeing it. And I told the other brother, I said, did you notice something on her face? She said, Pastor, I am wondering about the same thing myself. Now, she got home that night for years. It was like the husband does not want to see her. This is a very beautiful sister. Highly placed person. Well, that very night, she got home very, very late. Having gone to church in the morning, number one, the husband doesn't want her to be coming to church. Number two, she came to church and did not return on time. So she was scared to death going home. And then she carefully opened the door. Meanwhile, I told some brethren to go with her. She opened the door carefully, hoping that the husband must have gone upstairs and sleep. So she could just sneak in and then pretend as if she's been in the house. By the time she opened the door, lo and behold, the man was waiting for her right on the couch. And then her heart break. And the man said, Come in, come in, the man that never wanted to see her. And the man got up and said, welcome. The sister was trying to say, I am sorry. She said, no, 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 no problem. And the man put his hand around her and took her upstairs. The power of God over the forces of darkness, that power is present tonight. I said that power is present tonight. We have one of our pastors here, and he's here, he's hearing me as I'm speaking, and he's uh, uh, doing one thing or the other right now, he's in the, in the house. They were married and no child, no child. And then one day I finished ministering during the week, during the week. And then as I was stepping down from the pulpit, the Spirit of the Lord just arrested me. And I went to him, and I called him by his name. I said, on so so and so day, I'm coming to your house. And she said, that pastor, that will be fine. And um, that day came. That day came. And your day has come. I said, your day has come. And so I told my wife, we're going to visit so and so person. I didn't tell her anything. But I knew what the Lord has told me. That that day, there is always a day appointed for your miracle. And so we got there. We sat down. She wanted to entertain. She's here. He's here. The wife is here. And I said, no, no problem. I said, let us pray. And then I opened a page of the Bible. And then I read just about two, three verses. And I said, let us pray. And then we prayed. And then I got up. I said, we're going. Pastor, you travel more than one hour to come to my house. And you will not stay to drink, to eat. I said, it's not the time for eating and drinking. What happened is, whenever the wife gets pregnant, at a particular period of time, a serpent will appear to her in the dream. And once she sees the serpent, the pregnancy will come down. Power over the forces of darkness. It will come to your life in Jesus' name. And it has happened the first time, it happened the second time, I can't remember how many times. And the final one, the, baby, the pregnancy was actually about six months. And I normally would think that a six months old pregnancy can be rescued. But not in that situation because that serpent came again. And so they lost that baby. And that grieved my spirit. I said, Lord, even truth, God be for us. Where are the signs that our father spoke about? 
And that day came, and I said I was coming. And so when I was done with what I needed to do, I got up to go. And so we left. That very month, she took in again. And then after some months, the serpent came again. This time around, you would have thought because we prayed, the serpent will not come. The devil will come again, but will overcome. And so when the serpent came again, God gave her supernatural power in her dream, and then she killed that serpent. Power over the forces of darkness is present in the house. Is present in the house. Is present in the house. Turn with me your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 10. When we say we are believers, when we say we are Christians, when we say we are servants of the Lord, when we say we are ambassadors, ambassadors of, of the cross, and when Jesus said the works he did we shall do, and the greater works we will do, and we cannot see those signs and wonders, something is wrong. But whatever is wrong, the Lord will make them right in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 10 of Matthew, verse 1. And when he had called unto him, his 12 disciples, he gave them what? Power. He gave them what? Power. You are getting the power tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That is the power that we're talking about tonight. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I look at the 19th verse over there and see again this power of the living God that has been released unto every believer. Every believer, not just to the pastors, not just to the bishop, not just to the archdeacon or whosoever, but every believer, every believer. And if you're a believer tonight and you will believe in the power of God, greater things will happen through you in Jesus' name. Act Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, behold, I give unto you what? Power. To tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The Lord is saying that when you go with this power, and you begin to demonstrate it, the problem with believers is we don't demonstrate that power. It's just like the keyboard that our organists have been using. There are all kinds of music there. And if you don't go there and then begin to press, you will never get any sound. The keyboard is useless by itself. The power of God is useless in you when you cannot put it to work. Today, our Father in the Lord, the General Superintendent, was sharing with the ministers and talked about what happened in 1985. 1985. And exactly that year is when the Lord touched me. I didn't see when I got born again. Because when I saw what happened at the National Stadium, Lagos, Nigeria, 1985, the great miracle crusade, I said, Lord, if you can use anybody, you can use me. If you can use anyone, you can use me. Amen. And after that, I will go on the street and look. You see, troublemaker. The mad people are there. They don't come to me. I will go after them. And I just wanted to demonstrate that power of God. Just wanting to demonstrate that power of God. And I am telling you, I can count one, two, three, four. As now, I can't even remember everything that the Lord has done just because of the power of God. I look at my Father and the Lord because I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this, so that you will know. I said, I have read books. I have listened to messages. But I have not been privileged or opportune to see live people working miracle. But I saw my own pastor doing it. And I know that he is calling upon God. And if he is calling on God and God is answering him, all I need to do is to live the right kind of life. And that same God will be my God. Because God has been the God of the whole universe. But when Abraham came, God became the God of Abraham. Isaac came, he became the God of Isaac. Jacob came, he became the God of Jacob. And so people will begin to pray, Oh God of Abraham, Isaac, 
and Jacob. And I said, he can be my own God. I said, he can be my own God. And he will be your own God in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, verses 28. True to 34. And look at what happened here. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gagasins, they had met him to possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fears, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee? Jesus, that son of God, had thou come hither to torment us before the time, and there was a good way off. From them, and heard of many swine, so the devils besought him, the devil will play with you. I said the devil will play with you. The devil besought him, saying, if thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the heart of swine. And he said unto them, go. What do you say to the devil in your life? What do you say to the affliction in your life? What do you say to the oppression in your life? What do you say to the torment of the devil? What do you say to the barrenness? What do you say to the infirmity? There we go. I said there we go. Because you are a man, you are a woman of authority in Jesus' name. To cut a long story short, Jesus said go. And what did they do? They went. They went. They went. The same thing will happen in your life in Jesus' name. That is one of the cases. One of the cases of satanic control in human life. That's my point one. This is the cases of satanic control in human life. Matthew chapter 9 verse 20. Matthew chapter 9 verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith. What? Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole when? From that hour. This is your hour. In the day of his power, the people shall be willing. This is your hour of miracle. This is your hour of deliverance. A brother came to me many years back and said, Pastor, and this is somebody who is not just a brother, but a committed person in the church, a worker in the church, working under me. And he said, he said oh, sorry, he didn't say pastor, brother. I wasn't a pastor then. I was just a brother. Amen. And I'm still a brother right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he said, uh, Brother XYZ, he said, I have a problem. He came to meet his leader. And when you go to meet your leader for help and you can't be helped, there is a problem. And he said, something is working all over me. He called it ant. He said, ant, all over, all over. And then he has complained and complained. And one day I said, Brother, let us pray. A time will come that you will feel the prompting of the Spirit. The move of God. You see, sometimes, some people, they just want to run and pray and pray and pray. It's good to pray. But you need to know when God is moving. The paralyzed man at the beautiful gate has always been there. The apostles have always been seeing him. But his time came. His hour came. And when John and Peter saw him, he looked at them and they said, look at us. And they thought they were going to ask for arms. He, they, uh, sorry, uh, he thought they were going to give him arms. But what did they do? They gave him arm. They gave their hand. Amen. 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 Because Peter says, silver and gold we have not. But such as we have, I give unto, we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And the moment he said it, the power of God came right in. The power of God came right in. And then the man was wondering. He, he's been used to sitting there all his life. And Peter knowing that the power of God is already at work. Stretched forth the hand. Lifted him up. And it was all over. Your problem is all over. I say your problem is all over. 
your nightmare is all over. That confusion in the family is all over. Your jobless situation is all over. That migraine headache is all over. That barrenness is all over. In Jesus' name is all over. I said in Jesus' name is all over. Amen. Our pastor from Alabama is here. I was at Alabama to minister. And then that particular day, their day. Which one is your own day? What day is your day? Your day has come. I said your day has come. And I believe the brethren should be here themselves. And it was time to pray. And I said today, I lay hands on some people sometimes, but today, I have not been led to lay hand upon anybody. I say, however, wherever you are, raise up your hand. Raise up your hand and I'm going to pray for you. And then I prayed. And after I prayed, I said, the power of God is there with you. That's your own hand. Lay it upon yourself. Wherever you're hurting, lay it upon yourself. And there was a brother in the meeting. The wife was not there. The wife is a medical doctor. And then he laid his hand upon his own tummy. They've been married for years. And he said, according to him, that God, this represents the womb of my wife. And with their hands upon where they were aching, I stayed on the pulpit and I prayed. And then the meeting was all over. And we all went home. And I have always believed that after I have prayed, and it seemed that nothing has happened, I believe something has happened. If I am praying and it has appeared as if nothing is happening, I believe something is happening. And so we went home that very night. The pastor called and said, Sir, this is what happened. I said, tell me. And then he told me that the brother said this, said that this is what they said. That very night, when we were praying in the church, and I said, lay your hand. And the brother laid the hand upon the tummy. The wife was at work. At that particular time, she was having stomach problem. Severe one, serious one. And then later on, she called the husband and said, Honey, I almost died today. The kind of stomach problem I had, I never had it before. And the husband asked, What time was that? And the time she mentioned was exactly the time the husband was upon the tummy in the child. The following day, the following day, because they've been married without any child, the following day, maybe around 4 or 5 a.m., I can't remember the exact time, the husband woke up, went to another room, and began to prepare the room. He began to prepare the room. He began to prepare the room. And the wife later woke up and then said, Honey, where are you? Where are you? And then he answered, I am in our baby's room. The woman took in. The woman took in. The woman took in. And when she finally gave birth, she gave birth to a boy and a girl. Power over the forces of darkness. Whatsoever is holding your miracle back will be destroyed. Whatsoever is suppressing you will be destroyed. Whatever is hindering you will be removed from your path in Jesus' name. Power over the forces of darkness is coming your way. And the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. The woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9 verse 20 was another situation. Another situation. Look at it there. Verse 20. And behold the woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Made whole. I told you before, verse 22 says, Jesus answered her that her faith has made her whole. If you will believe in the Lord tonight, Something will happen in your life in Jesus' name. What causes satanic control in human life? What causes it? Number one thing is sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
somebody said, if you have not the grace of God in your life, you will be disgraced. When you are not a child of God, definitely you will be a child of the devil. Sin. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Look at it from verse 8. The Bible says that he that committed sin is of the devil. Sin will sell you to the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. And then verse 9 tells us that whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin. And then verse 10 tells us that in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Anywhere I go, I can begin to tell you this, 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 this. The first thing I do before I pray for you is examine yourself. Examine your life. And then just for adventure, just for adventure. And then confess everything to the Lord. After we are through with that, then we will pray. And I can tell you, that power of God has never failed. And in your life tonight, it will not fail in Jesus' name. Sin causes yoke. It causes bondage. It causes oppression. It causes affliction. It causes torment. It causes bondage in human life. Self. What are you doing with your body? What are you doing with your life? A doctor came to me. This is a doctor. And he said, Pastor, I have a problem. He called me to the office. He closed the door. He said, I realize you are a pastor. And this is not an African person. And then he opened up. And he said, my problem emanated from watching pornography. And he became demonized. He came under oppression. He was medically treating people, but he's not free himself spiritually. And so I cancelled him and I told him, if I regard iniquity in my heart, if I regard iniquity in my eyes, if I regard iniquity in my hand, amen, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. The first thing is to repent and turn unto the Lord and turn unto the Lord. And then we prayed. And then we prayed. He was not in the church. But I prayed for him. And the next time I saw him, he said, when I was praying, there was something within him. To cut a long story short, right now, he has given up pornography. He's completely and totally free by the power of God. He couldn't deliver himself before. The power to save, to deliver, to liberate is here in Jesus' name. You see, maybe sometimes all we need to do is to be in the kind of environment where I am. Amen? That all pastors, anywhere, everywhere, no matter our church, that you begin to manifest the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. Don't be afraid. This is what I tell myself. I think it was a preacher that asked here many years ago uh, that I think it was Shamba Koso. And they said, you are preaching healing and deliverance and everything. And they said, supposing you pray for somebody and the person died, what will you do? He said, I will tell them, bring the next person. They said, supposing that one died, what will you do? He said, I will tell them, bring the next person. They said, why? He said, because it is not me that heals. I am only a servant. God only say, do this. Whatever happened thereafter is God's job. It's not my job. I think many of us, we are taking it upon ourselves that we are the healer. You are not a healer. He is a healer. If I have given any testimony tonight, it is not because of anything. It is to God's glory. Because I say to myself, and I say before God, without him, I am nothing. The people here, they know I sing his song, and I love it. And when I sing it, I am very passionate about it. I have no power of my own. Holy Spirit, I am begging you to help me. I have no power of my own. And if you come to that realization that you have no power of your own, it's not your own problem. You do what God has asked you to do. If they believe, they will see the glory of God.
If they don't believe, they remain in their situation. And tonight, I can tell you, I share testimony with you. If you believe, because all I'm going to declare is the word of God, and I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And God will not allow his glory to be shared by any man or any graven image. And so he will glorify himself. That is why anywhere I go, I don't, I don't see any problem as being big. Too big. Too small. Problem is problem. And every problem in your life shall be crushed in Jesus' name. I said it shall be crushed in Jesus' name. So, what are you doing with your body? What are you watching with your eyes? Where are you going with your leg? And some of us, the way we dress, we make ourselves to be agents of the devil. And we don't understand the strategy of Satan. We see those things out there, people that are religious, but not righteous. And just because they go to church, we begin to copy them, we begin to emulate their way of doing things. The places to go, you can go. A pastor was saying today that he read a tract from our general superintendent. Others may, I cannot. Why don't you say to yourself that others may behave this way, I cannot. Others may act this way, I cannot. Many people have brought problems upon their life with their own mouth. Some because of carelessness. Some because they are too carefree. But the Lord will bring deliverance in Jesus' name. And so, sin, self, and then Satan brings yokes and bondages in the life of people. And then society, society. And the society here works hand in hand with the devil. When in your family you notice something is happening, it happened to A, it happened to B, it happened to C. And now it's your turn. It's societal problem. Maybe I should say family problem. Some call it generational problem. But if it is generational, and you are a child of God, you don't belong to that generation. You belong to the generation of God. And you can be an exemption. You hear what I said? You can be exempted from that cause in Jesus' name. Ruth was from Moab. There was a curse upon the whole nation. But Ruth decided for herself that she was going to be an exemption. And she was exempted. She became eventually the great grandmother of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can be exempted from any cause. From any you. From every attack in the name of Jesus Christ. I say you can be exempted and you'll be exempted in Jesus' name. When there is a control of the devil, what happens? Sometimes they control you psychologically. They control you emotionally. They control you uh, socially. They control your finance. They control your marriage. Uh, have you not seen people? Have you not seen people that um, a woman never stays with the husband and their family? They always go. Sometimes they may not be divorced, but they will not, never be together. It's a yoke in the family. And as a child of God, you can break away from that yoke in Jesus' name. Some, it is divorce. Husband divorce. Uh, this one divorce. That one divorce. Uh, at other times, it is failure. You have tried and tried. You have tried and failed. You have tried and failed. You have tried and failed. Your time of success has come. The Bible says affliction will not arise the second time. I said affliction will not arise the second time. The last failure you had will be the final one. I said will be the final one. Yeah. I think it was three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. We had a wedding day, and then a sister came, and then he said, Pastor, he, he, she brought a baby, and then I knew her. She's our member, and I greeted and said, Pastor, you have forgotten. I said, forgotten what? He said, your baby. With him, I said, I know my baby. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But the following day on Sunday, she now said, she now said that, the, I can't remember, but she was saying it. Um, and then, let's pay attention here. They will take care of things over there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The devil is in trouble. I said the devil is in trouble. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. And so she came and said at uh, the following day that when I came to Atlanta, Georgia, that um, uh, that day I was running. She said I was running. And then uh, she met me by the way. And she said, Pastor, this problem, that problem with pregnancy. And she said, I said, I said, listen to this. She said, I said that the last one that happened will be the last one. That the next one, will, the baby will come. And that was the baby that she brought. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. You see, we have somebody here. He's one of our pastors also. Amen. But he wasn't a pastor then. I was ministering one of our revival services here. And then uh, I was praying during the prayer session. And then the Lord spoke. And I said, you were fired in that place. And I didn't know anything. I said, the same place where they fired you, go back there. I said, go back there because they are going to rehire you. And then she believed, he believed it, he said, man, believed it for himself. And then he went back there. Obedience of faith. I was praying. I didn't know. I said, go back there. And then he went back there. And when he got there, they said, Mr. XYZ, where have you been? He said, but two people fired me. They said, who fired you? They said, but you, and they said, well, we, we, we've been looking for you. To cut a long story short, that very day, he got hired. And then they gave him money, more than what he was earning before they fired him. Today is your day. And the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. Whatever the situation may be, maybe your case has to do with insanity. Insanity. You remember the man of Gadara. The man of Gadara. And you know what you read in Matthew chapter 8. Uh, coming from the tomb. The power of God is still here. As it was in those days. It is present here tonight. In Jesus name. How can we get killed from this oppression. From this satanic control. In human life. I need to tell you first of all. Let's quickly go back to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. And then you see what happened in that passage. I look at verse 7 first. Uh, and then you see that. That in that passage, the devils, they recognize Jesus. They will recognize you. I said they will recognize you. They recognize Jesus in verse 7. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Thou son of the most high God. Put your finger there and go to John chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, As many as received him, to them God gave the power to become who? The sons of God. The sons of God. Thou art. Thou art. The son of the most high God. They recognize Jesus. They will recognize you. I said they will recognize you. And then in verse 6. Go back to verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off. He ran and worshipped. In those days the way they worship is kneeling down. Kneeling down. The devil knelt down for Jesus and you are the representative of Jesus and you remember in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord they knelt down, they will bow before you in the name of Jesus and then look at verse 10 look at verse 10 and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country, out of the country, out of the country, when you pray for demon-possessed people, they will be pleading with you to run away. Because they will not be able to stand or withstand the power of God in you, in Jesus' name. And so, finally, verse 13, and forthwith, everybody say forthwith. Forthwith, Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit did what? Went out and entered into the swine. They obeyed the Lord. They obeyed the Lord. The storm, the sea, the wind will, be, will obey my voice. And then peace will be still in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10. We are looking at the kill. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The 70 returned and then they told the Lord that even the devil was subject unto them. Subject unto them. And they will be subject unto you in Jesus' name. For you to be free, what is the way out? Number one, you have to desire desire freedom for yourself. You have to desire freedom for yourself. Number two, you have to make a decision to follow the Lord. And you have to be determined 
determined about it and follow whatever direction the Lord is leading you unto. You must be committed unto the Lord. You must confide in the Lord. You must have compassion like Christ. Why am I saying compassion? Because I use the word commitment, committed unto the Lord. Number two, have confidence in the Lord. Number three, have compassion. There are people that offended you. And the offense is so great. And you said, over my dead body. And you say you will never forgive. And the devil knows you will not steal. You will not kill. You will not commit immorality if you are a Christian. But offenses will come. Among the members of the choir, offenses will come. The usher, offenses will come. Pastor to member, member to pastor, offenses will come. And the devil uses the tool of unforgiveness against believer. And because he knows, Jesus said, if you will not forgive, from where? From your from your mouth? No, from your heart. You know, many times you say, it's okay, it's all right, when we know it is not all right. Instead of dealing with the issue, we'll sweep it under carpet. And the devil knows we have not forgiven. And so eventually, he uses that against us. He holds us captive because he knows that our own sins will not be forgiven. So, if you will have compassion, they did it, try to excuse them, try to say maybe it wasn't intentional, maybe it wasn't uh, a deliberate, and then just continue with your life. Maybe you don't know that when you harbor hatred, malice, bitterness in your heart, you become heavy within. And you begin to have heartache in your heart. And then you are carrying a load that God has not given unto you. Every satanic load will be removed in Jesus' name. Have compassion like Christ. You have offended others before, so forgive others. Then cooperate with Christ. Whatever he wants you to do, be willing and ready to do it. Be willing and ready to do it. And tonight, something is going to happen. Why don't we rise upon our feet and then go before the Lord? It's not so much about teaching or preaching. It is about the demonstration of the power of the Lord. Behold, I give unto you power. 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 The Bible tells us that we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against all the rulers of darkness. And they are the enemies of your soul. And that power of God is available for you. But before you can get it, you need conversion. You need salvation. It's not just being religious, but there must be righteousness. There must be purity. There must be holiness. There must be uprightness in your life. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself right now. Right now, examine yourself. Examine yourself. It's not about how long you have been in the church. It's not about what you are doing in the church. It's about who you are in the Lord. 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 You want to be free. You want to be free from sin. You want to be free from sin. Whether you are a worker in a church or, or you are a member in that church, it's not by title or position. It's not by longevity. It is by grace. The grace of God. The grace of God. It's not by your knowledge. No. It's not by your wisdom. It's by the grace of God. It's by the mercy of God. By the mercy of God. And if tonight you will repent of your sin, confess them to the Lord and call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. You will be saved. You will be saved in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Name we pray. Tonight, if you are here in this meeting and you know there is an alt in your life, there is something you know that will stand between you and your breakthrough. Forget about your position or your title. It may be a little thing, it may be a big thing. All eyes close, all eyes close. And I'm not calling you out. I just, I just want you to be yourself and be where God really wants you to be. I just want you to enjoy your Christian life. I just want you to be able, to be able to get to heaven, heaven happily, not sorrowfully. And tonight you are saying, Lord, I discovered this art, that art in my life. It's not according to your will. And you're saying, I surrender. I surrender. In the military, when the opponent surrenders, he lifts up the hand. Why don't you just raise up your hand and say, Lord, I surrender. God bless you.
God bless you. God bless you. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. I mean, those of you that you really know you are dealing with something in your life, I don't want to know what you are dealing with. I don't care what that situation is. You are just saying, Lord, I surrender. It's unto God. God bless you. God bless you. It's unto the Lord. Just, just quietly deal with it between you and the Lord. Deal with it between you and the Lord because the Lord will help you. 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 I don't even want the camera people to show, to show camera on you. It's a matter between you and the Lord. Because when the Lord does it, when he does it, uh, you'll be a happy Christian. You'll be a happy minister. You'll be a happy believer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, look at your children. Raise it up very well. They're saying, Lord, it's not my brother, it's not my sister. But it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. They are pointing to a particular thing in their life. That is there which ought not to be there. Which could be an hindrance and, up and an obstacle to their breakthrough and miracle. Which could have been the reason for the oppression, the affliction and the torment in their life. Lord, as they repent tonight and call upon your name. You said it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tonight, O oh Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. In Jesus' name, I pray the yoke of sin be broken completely in their lives in Jesus' name. The power of Satan be rolled away in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord will have mercy upon you. And now I take authority over every activities of the devil. In the life of everyone present here, the Bible says that thou, O God, confirms the words of your servant. And I come, Lord, not in my power, not by my power, but your power. I have no word of mine, but your word, O Lord. You said I shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto me. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I come against every activities of the devil. I come against every powers of darkness. I come against oppression in this place. I come against affliction in this place. I come against infirmity in this place. I come against long term infirmity in Jesus name. And I command, I command right now. My grain headache. I command right now insanity. I command right now blindness. I command right now paralysis. Come out in Jesus name. I command barrenness. Come out in Jesus name. You spirit of failure I bind you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth loose your grip upon the people. Loose your hold upon the people and come out now in Jesus name. That oppression in the middle of the night I come against you. That affliction I come against you. That spirit of getting a job and losing it I come against you. Come out right now in Jesus name. I come against that crisis in the family. Oh Lord oh God you instituted marriage for your own glory and the blessing of humanity. And so every activity of the devil in every family, in every home right now I command be destroyed in Jesus name. I pray for the single sisters and brothers right here who are old enough to get married but there is nobody coming their way. I decree right now, whatsoever, whatsoever, the power of darkness hindering them, blocking their chances, I command right now be destroyed in Jesus name. Oh Lord, oh God of every whatsoever, the need in the life of your people, I pray you will meet them. I pray their yoke shall be broken. I pray their bonds shall be loosed right now. From tonight, O oh Lord, impossibilities shall be made possible in Jesus' name. Even for those of them struggling in the ministry, O oh Lord, they are calling upon your name and they are serving you. You say, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, and you said that you will be with us unto the end of the world. Uh, you said upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I pray. Every attack of 
the devil upon the church of God. Every attack of the enemy upon the ministers of God be destroyed in Jesus' name. I pray, Father Lord, that the power of resurrection will come to work in every life. We we'll come to work in every family. We we'll come to work in every church. We we'll come to work in every business. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for answering. For in Jesus' name, I pray.